Welcome Crash Divers! This is an introduction to the modding system that's built right into Crash Dive 2. In this video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to fine-tune the game to match your personal playstyle. So let's get started! To open the modding editor, just go to the game's main menu, go to the Options button at the bottom right, scroll all the way to the bottom, and click on the Modding button. That opens up the editor. There is a warning message that's going to show you right off the bat where I'm just covering my ass to let you know if you break something, it's not my fault. But on the other hand, if you do break something, it's really easy to fix. Let's go ahead and jump right in with an example. Because US subs in the South Pacific during World War II were operating way in advance of their actual front lines, they didn't have resupply points. So in Crash Dive 2, the ammo you start with is the ammo you have for the entire mission. Once you run out, you're out. So if you aren't happy with the number of torpedoes you have, you can change it. To change your starting loadout, in the drop-down list at the top, you're going to select Vehicles. The very first vehicle on the list is Gato. That's your boat. You're going to scroll down, and you're going to start seeing some ammo counts. Shell count, that's for your deck gun. Bullet count, that's for your AA gun. And then down here, we've got torpedo count. Default number is 34, but let's increase that to, how about 60? Once you've typed it in, click the Save button, good old-fashioned floppy disk icon, close the editor, and let's see if that worked. We'll start a new game, accept the defaults, and check our torpedo count. We have 60, and there you have it. We just modded the game. It is that easy. So what else can you change through the modding editor? Well, literally thousands and thousands of properties. Pretty much anything you can think of, you can change it. So let me give you a quick overview of what all the categories are. If you hit this drop down menu at the top, we already did a quick demonstration of vehicles. First item is your sub, but every other ship, every other plane that you see in the game are all in here. And you can select any of them and make changes to them. If you want to affect how hard they are to kill, how fast they move, how fast they turn, what kind of weaponry they carry, this is where you do it. You'll notice this list has kind of outgrown the term vehicles as well. Even your static shore targets are also in here. The weapons list shows every type of weapon in the game, both yours and enemies. If you want to adjust fire rate, the amount of damage that are caused, the range that they can hit you at, this is the place you'll do it. By now you've probably used the upgrades menu in the game to install new technology on your sub as you progress through the war. In here, you can change the effect that each level of those upgrades has as well as how much it costs. In the detect ranges menu, you can modify how far away enemies can spot you. For each of these categories, which is a thing that they can spot, the first three numbers are the default ranges that each enemy type can spot you at. Transports, warships, and aircraft, which have the longest line of sight. Quick side note here about units. Regardless of whether you're using metric or imperial units in the game, all distance units in the modding editor are meters. The numbers below that are multipliers that are applied to those ranges based on various factors like how fast you're moving, what your throttle is set at, how deep you are, uh, world visibility due to rain and fog. I'm sure by now you've used the sub management screen while in the game. In there, I'm sure you've noticed that your sub is broken up into a series of compartments or locations. In this menu, you can adjust how those locations react to damage, to flooding, and how much crew space they have. Campaigns are broken up into a series of war patrols. In the campaign modding window, you can affect where each of those war patrols take place, write your own briefing, or add new missions if you want. Almost all of the sounds in the game can be modified or replaced. You can't actually do that work here in the editor because you'll need your own sound editing software, but this will tell you instructions on how to do it and show you what sounds have been modded. Finally, there is the game VARs menu. I saved this for last because it's sort of a catch-all for all those game variables that I just couldn't find another place to put them. To try to make it easier, 
I organize them into categories, which you'll see in a list on the left. But generally, if you're looking for something to mod and it doesn't show up under any of the other categories, this is where you're going to find it. Enemy AI, the world that you're playing in, how missions are assigned, weather, spotting, aircraft, uh, enemy weapon actions, you'll find them all in here. Because there's so many things to change in here, it can be difficult to find that one particular thing you're looking for. So in that case, I recommend using the search tool. Click that, brings up a string box where you can type in, let's say you want to modify something about uh, O2 levels on your boat. So if you type in O2, it filters down to just sub resources. If you click on that, it'll show you only variables that have O2 in the name. So in here you can change how much it costs in your O2 to fire a single torpedo, how fast your O2 refills once you're surfaced, and so on. Uh, if you want to modify something about torpedoes, type in torpedoes, and you'll see in real time, it'll filter the list on the left. If you clear that out, then you'll see all of your options again. You may also want to find only modification values that you have actually changed. In that case, little pencil icon here, check that and it'll filter down to only mods that you've made. So for example, the enemy torpedoes where I previously unchecked that, that's all I'm gonna see. After you've made some changes, remember you always do have to click the save button in order to save. If you don't, when you exit, the game will ask you. Uh, if you say yes, then you'll lose your changes. Say no, you can still save them. So what if you modded something and you're not happy with the results? or the game's completely broken. Well, easy enough. You can filter on just edited items. Every single item has a little revert button next to it. You can click that. It's now reverted to its default value and you can save and you're back to defaults. Or if you wanna just in bulk reset everything, there's a revert button up at the top that reverts everything in your current category back to their default values. So now that you understand the basics of modding, let's try something fun. Let's say you want your deck gun to be a fully automatic ship killer. We're going to go into weapons. We're going to scroll down to the Mark 10, which I happen to know is your player's starting three inch 50 caliber artillery gun. We're going to go down. Fire rate by default is 12 rounds per minute, which is wholly unacceptable. How about 200 rounds per minute? We'll save that. But what about when I upgrade my gun? I don't want to lose my awesome fire rate. In fact, I want it to get even better. Let's do this. Let's filter on fire rate and step through all of our other gun upgrades and have that rate get even faster every time. 50, 300. 350. Let's save that and exit the modding editor. All right, let's see how that works now that we've got our mods all saved. I'm going to continue a previously saved game that I set up just for testing. And if everything works as it should, yeah, I'd say that's an effective deck gun. So there you have it. I hope you'll now use the modding editor to fine tune Crash Dive 2 to be exactly the game you want it to be, or just use it to break the game in fun and exciting new ways. Either way, good hunting.